as promised at the top of our presentation, uh, we said that we would get to uh, as many of our audience questions as possible. And so that's what we're going to move over to now. Uh, the first question, Andy, is for you. Um, this person says, hi, Andy, both mRNA and CAR T face scalability challenges due to their personalized nature. To what extent are you le leveraging technology to enable supply chain or orchestration for mRNA? And how does it compare, contrast with your time in CART T? Um, so the challenge is very similar to CART T um, because you you start with the patient and you have to maintain you know this process to return to that patient. Um, the, the the supply chain challenge, the chain of identity challenge, is is essentially identical. The, the RNA manufacturing has additional elements to it because of the process I was just describing. The tumor sample has to go to be sequenced. That may or may not be in your manufacturing facility where you're manufacturing the drug product, um, but it can be completely uncoupled. Then you have to manufacture the plasmid. Then you have to manufacture the, um, the, the mRNA product, drug product. And so all of those have to be coupled together somehow and maintaining the chain of identity. And also it's, a, it's quite a challenging scheduling issue because you have to line up this sequence of events very precisely to minimize lost time in between the transitioning steps. I mean, one way to do this is you consolidate it all into one manufacturing facility, but it's three very different sort of manufacturing technologies. And so that may not be how a, a, a network is set up. If it's not consolidated into one facility, then you have to have the processes in place to support moving throughout the different um, elements of your of your manufacturing network. And so to do that, you have to develop computer systems that support that, both the scheduling element of it and the chain of identity, maintaining chain of identity element of it um, that allows you to, to adapt to things that go wrong, right? So schedules change because we don't get the right tumor sample collected or the, the tumor samples delayed in shipment or the drug product is delayed in shipment or the plasmid is delayed in shipment. So you have to, which then has a an impact on your manufacturing schedule. And so then you have to reschedule the manufacturing run for that product because it's two days late. Um, those are all, you know, typical supply chain challenges that you have to face day to day. And as you scale, those challenges will just increase because the, you know, the the, the errors will increase with the with the with the scale. And so we have to develop a system that, to the extent possible, streamlines that process and allows you to accommodate for things that are going to go wrong that are out of your control. Okay, great. Thank you, Andy. Um, Daniel, uh, perhaps this is a good question for you. Um, what challenges do you foresee in mRNA cancer immunotherapy for solid tumors? Uh, this person is asking. I know that came up in your commentary earlier, and uh, perhaps we could shine a little more light on that. You know, I think um, we've crossed an amazing precipice with the data generated from Moderna and the Genentech BioNTech vaccines that show these patients have immune systems that can be harnessed to activate T cells. Um, you know, I'm just going to reiterate what I said earlier, and that is the next step is to take that complexity out and use our immune system to do all of this directly in vivo. And, and I, you know, strongly believe we can do that. Um, these vaccines clearly show that our immune systems are capable of taking neoantigen, processing it, and activating T cells. And, you know, the key now is to think about, you know, as these, obviously these technologies develop, is to think about the next iterations, which in my opinion, are getting the cells to find this antigen themselves in the patient. Uh, and then you take the personalization out of it and you have an off-the-shelf product that can be made uh, for the same cost as a, a COVID vaccine without the need for complex personalization. Uh, and so that, that to me is where the future is heading and addressing the tumor microenvironment question. I, I don't think in immuno-oncology it matters whether you're using an RNA vaccine 
an ADC or a CAR T cell or whatever it is, the tumor marker environment is a formidable foe. And we need to think about how we address that, whether it's with combinations or one thing that RNA has that's quite unique uh, and is very different to viruses for that matter, lentiviruses, is you can actually generate large cargoes, right? You can deliver, you know, theoretically, you know, 10 KB kind of constructs, 14 KB kind of constructs, three to four times larger than, uh, you know, viruses. And don't get me wrong, that comes with another set of challenges. But the point is, is it's that capability uh, is there. Um, so that, that's how I see the future, frankly. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Um, Andy, this question perhaps is best for you. Uh, earlier, you mentioned that it takes uh, only 30 days for receive, from receiving a tumor sample to have the first dose of the vaccine. Does it mean first dose in human, clinical phase one? Is this based on fully developed platform process for mRNA and LMP formulation? So in our current sort of clinical program, we've treated, I think, something like 300 patients now. Um, so it's way past first in human. Um, we're in a phase two, as Daniel mentioned, a phase two now uh, that was the re sort of the outcome of a very small investigator-sponsored trial at MSK that's in pancreatic cancer, and that's that's targeting something like 400 patients, I believe, in something in that range. So um, BioNTech has done a really amazing job of, of streamlining how to manufacture these things. And, um, you know, we are consistently doing this now in that sort of 28 to 30 day range with, with a lot of effort being placed on doing it in faster than that, you know, so the, um, the, the, again, turnaround time equals patient access at the end of the day, um, and cost equals patient access. If it's too expensive, you won't have a big patient population. If it takes too long to reach the patients, that also reduces your accessible patients. So from a, from a commercial sort of strategic development of, of how you would launch a therapy like this, those are two very critical aspects that we have to address. Um, to maximize who we can reach if the guys on the science side, like Daniel, figure out how to make these work super effectively. So two very interesting challenges. Both <laughs> probably Daniel's is more difficult than my challenge, but, um, but the, 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 the manufacturing and delivery side of this is not simple. <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's another area that obviously we need to improve on. Sure, fair. Um, we have a few that I want to try to get through in our remaining time. Um, Daniel, I'd like to ask this question of you. How do you ensure patient safety when each vaccine is custom made? How do you predict possible off-target effects? And has the regulation around multiplex cell and gene therapies begun to open up? No. <laughs> Last point is no. It's becoming It's becoming more complicated, and I think what we saw... Uh, frankly, this week with the FDA coming out with the lymphoma issue in the CAR T cell world and its impact um, is a little bit um, unfortunate when you consider the numbers, right? There are many thousands of patients that have been treated with CAR T and the lymphoma is, is, is uh, you know, a uh, needle in a haystack, I think. So obviously, scientifically, we want to understand it, but I don't think it means uh, a lot. But Beyond that, I, I think the regulatory component is getting more complicated and more difficult. And I think um, we view cancer patients around the world as all needing therapeutics. And so we often will look uh, to different geographies to you know, initiate therapies. I think Verve is an interesting example here, right? They started New Zealand and, and the UK for their clinical program instead of the US. and they were actually put on hold in the US and, and maybe that was right or not right. I don't know the answers because I'm not behind it, but I think for RNA biology and, and therapies, you know, taking a global perspective on things, especially early on, uh, is important, will help facilitate moving things uh, quickly. Now, patient safety. Um, I think one of the things that needs to be recognized here when we're talking about activation of myeloid cells and an antigen presentation to T cells, it's a much more natural way of eliciting an immune response. And 
if you think of the COVID vaccine, it really takes like three shots for us to get a, an antibody titer that's, you know, where we want it to be. And that just goes to show how the immune system works. It has an, it has an exposure and then you get exposed again. And by the third time, hopefully things are where they need to be. So it's quite different to a CAR T cell, for example, that has been activated in culture. It's, you know, CD28, CD3, multiple days in cytokines, so on and so forth, transduced and transduced in a way that there is really no shutdown mechanism once it gets activated. And so the, the potential for, you know, <coughs> on target, excuse me, <coughs> on target off tumor um, activation is much stronger. Uh, and obviously in the vaccine case, these are peptide MHC restricted T cells as well, proper TCR, you know, T cells. So I think we are fortunate that CAR T cells came first because I think it opened the door to some of the safety things to watch for. And every single clinical trial in this space now has that window and lens to look through. And with anti r 6 and all these other approaches to use, we're, we're very careful for that. Um, so I, I think, you know, the this particular class of therapeutics, the potential for having some of these really robust, you know, out of control immune responses is much lower not to say it's zero it's much lower and we can you know stand on the shoulders of the great work uh that has come out of the car t cell world to help us manage those um that would be my answer to that